Hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at the results of last week's auction picks. Up first, the Stagia 260 RS. This one got well past Derek's guess, all the way up to 8,700, but it was still unsold. The Plymouth Satellite, as we knew last week, was cancelled. The Porsche 928 sold, and someone picked that one up for 13890 The Nissan 180 SX Type X was not only unsold, it got no bids at all. The Audi RS4 Avante did sell, and it went for quite a bit over Derek's guess. Somebody got that for $49,030. The two-wheel drive Delica was unsold, and that one only got bid up to $1,460. The Supra was also unsold, having only been bid up to $19,950. The Porsche 911 got picked up for about 4000 under Derek's guess. Someone took that home for 36650 The RX-7 Type R is another unsold car. That was only bid up to 5460 Finally, the Daihatsu Copen did sell. Someone bought that for 13430 That's going to do it for last week's picks. Now here's Derek with this week's. Hey guys, what is up? It's Derek here, and we're going to run through this week's auction picks from you guys. Thank you everyone for sending in a million bazillion cars. We got so many that it took us an hour and a half to go through them all. Uh, word of advice for next week, let's limit each person who's submitting cars to your top three picks, or the three that you think are the most interesting, because then that way we're not spending our customers' time <laughs> looking at cars for a YouTube video when we could be, you know, helping people who are actually going to be buying the cars. That being said, thank you everyone who does play the game. Thank you for the Facebook likes and the shares and whatever else social media nonsense that there is. And so our first guy up today, oh, of the 10 that we got this week, is from Elijah McDonald. And you won the thumbnail by submitting this lovely, that's Andrew sneezing in the background, because it is now Cedar... <laughs> Cedar season in Japan. And so this is a GC8. This is a version 6. And here's something interesting. The version 6 has is the only version with these wheels. And so they are kind of... Well, they're not a rare wheel, but a lot of people who own this kind of car will change their wheels to something a little bit more flashy. And so it uh, it's not the type of wheels that you see every day. The car looks good in white. It has the version 6 rear wing, which is a little bit more aggressive than the version 5. It is a bit of a shame that Subaru didn't do what Mitsubishi did with making an adjustable rear wing. But the GC is a cool car, and there's no denying that. Let's see what this one is according to the auction sheet. And bring up the interior while we're at it. Uh-oh, broken. Ooh, super long. <laughs> Aftermarket steering wheel. Okay, let's not... Uh, Let's not talk about that too much. There we go. Do, 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 do. All right, so it's year 2000, Impreza WRX STI 6, 2000cc, of course, the only engine size that these came with. 109.005 kilometers. No mention of a timing belt being changed, so you probably have to do that. And uh, timing belts are a little bit annoying to change on these because of how far your camshaft gears are away. A typical four-cylinder will have a crankshaft gear or a pulley, and then two camshaft gears. But this one here has four camshaft gears, and so setting the belt properly with a single person is a little bit annoying, and I know that firsthand. So let's see, purchase from user, Momo steering wheel, I guess. Now they come with a Momo steering wheel, but it's more of a more of a standard-ish Momo steering wheel, not like a racing hardcore one like this one is. Rear spoiler. That's my sales point. This car comes with a rear spoiler, as if we couldn't see in the pictures. It's like somebody's looking at this sheet, like, rear spoiler? What? Really? This GC has a rear spoiler? Oh, I'm going to buy it now. It says original 16-inch wheels on here. comes with the owner's manual. Power steering doesn't work, and the engine makes weird sounds and is shaky. Huh. Well, that sounds like a nice car to buy. Actually, it could. Let's see. KMAA. That one's pretty far away, so... And a smaller auction that we wouldn't be able to check. Sometimes this kind of note, you can buy the car and you can get it uh, in good condition. Um, when it's only a, a small thing, like it needs to have one of the spark plugs plugged back in. Like a shaky engine is usually a misfire, right? And so misfires are often pretty easy, but they could be catastrophic. And so typically we wouldn't bid on something like this. If somebody wants to buy something like this, Usually we only let our seasoned customers in on cars like this because we know that they know what they're getting into. If it's a new customer, we don't know them very well. 
there would be kind of a, a pretty strong pushback from us because a non-running or a car that has problems like this, good chance that it will break down before it leaves and then we get stuck with a broken car that needs to be fixed and then it's like, hey, this is gonna cost you 1500 bucks to fix or two grand to fix. And they're like, but I don't have any money. And so we don't wanna be in a situation like that. Uh, it, it is a car with a lot of value. It looks like it maybe possibly needs that uh, engine replaced. And while you're at it, replace the power steering pump. Not a common problem with these cars though. The body's not great on this side. Got big scratches, big scratches, big scratches, medium dent. The rest of the body's okay. I would say that this one will probably land somewhere around 500,000 yen. It seems like a lot for a car that probably needs a rebuilt engine, but this car, the version 6s, are commonly around a million, and that leaves a lot of money on the table to swap the engine and still have a good car for a good value. I wouldn't do this one, though. I would find something else for sure with the interior that's in that rough of condition. Modifications like this, typically like a longer gear knob like that is done for racing preference. And so there's a good chance that this car has been raced and probably why the engine went poo poo. Okay, onto the next one from Bill Courtney who sent in like, I don't know how many, I, I wasn't the one who picked these cars, but always Bill sending in, in so many of them. Uh, let's see what we got here. Bill, you sent in, ooh, Toyota. And he said, lost in space much, in reference to kind of like the spaceship looks of this car. I remember when this one, or the next version of this one came out called the Estima in Japan, but the Previa back home, my aunt had one. And I used to think that it looked really dumb because it looks like a jelly bean spaceship love child. But I love the looks of these now, Estima and this one very much. In fact, I love these ones more than anything else because they're so end of 80s, like kind of when space was still a big thing, just the residuals of the 1960s space love. And I guess nowadays nobody cares about that kind of thing as much anymore, or at least the, the future. This is what the future is going to look like. We're all going to be driving around in pods. Yeah, it was kind of a, a bold move of them to go in this styling direction. We have an old person sign on the back and an old person sign on the front. And a dual sunroof. Looks like this one's a high roof model. Automatic transmission. Look at how big this uh, sunroof is too. And these do come with a skylight roof that have curving around glass skylights in the back here. This model doesn't have it though. And this is the late model because the dashboard is more swoopy than the early model ones that have flat dashboard. And I prefer the looks of the early model ones actually. Uh, dashboard and inside, outside, anywhere. So this is a 1992 Town A Super, Super Extra. Twin moon roof, four wheel drive, comes a twin moon roof, eight seater. It has like one of the gankiest seats I've ever seen. When you open this door, there is a flip down seat that is pointing backwards, like right here. And the whole seat cushion is like 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And then the back is the same size. It's really terrible, but it has its own seat belt. And so it is legal. But if you sit in that seat, then you have a 90% chance of dying in an accident. And so I don't recommend you do that. So auction sheet here, odometer 84, 891 kilometers. It's a diesel, 2000 CC. I've noticed head gaskets going on these smaller diesels from Toyota, uh, more so than the 2.4 that is kind of known as having head gasket problems. Um, partially could be due to the small displacement and turbo heating it up too much, but I don't really know. Could also have to do with lack of maintenance on cars like this that are typically owned by old people who, uh, don't maintain their car that much. I don't know. Or just don't care about their car anymore. Or they're like, I'm probably going to last about as long as this car is. I got a few more years left. And they all have American accents in Japan here, I guess. Okay, so various scratches, dents, underside, surface rust, body. Eh, has a lot of damage, it looks like. Scratches here, dents here, dents here, dents here. Crack on the taillight. Yeah, so the four-wheel drive with the diesel engine is usually a combination that raises the price up a bit, but the condition of this one's not that great. So I would say that we're looking at about 220,000 yen for this. Okay, on to the next one from Redneck Hunter, sent in this. This vehicle is, 
obviously it's a deli car which is another four-wheel drive minivan but cooler and more expensive than the uh the town aces from toyota that's weird not very many times mitsubishi has the better product compared to toyota or nissan so kind of weird and so this one uh we had a lot of customers not a lot we had a few customers send this one in who want to import it to the u.s despite the fact that this one's not importable until november it says december here but if you go down here and you put in the chassis code it's actually november and that's a long time to wait for your car to come in even if it is cool and the reason why everybody loves it is because white with the skylight roof this one here's one two three four five sunroofs is a really rare combination and the condition of this one looks to be pretty good and who doesn't love a brown interior and the, the answer to that is not me because i love brown interiors and brown curtains it's excellent especially as a parent you want that brown interior because it hides dirt really well okay so uh 98 881 kilometers automatic transmission 2.4 liter that's weird the 2.4 is not to the diesel where does it say that gasoline engine so most of the people buying these want the diesel ones but gasoline feels nice to drive you just don't get as good a fuel economy and the engine isn't as dependable but i don't think that second one's really much of a worry for one of these cars anyways auction grade four interior b what do you got here led headlights really huh interesting hid fog lamps 15 inch wheels keyless entry reverse monitor windshield rock chip interior dirty underside has been painted you got to watch out that they're not hiding some rust under there underside surface rust uh, side step scratched this looks like despite being a gasoline engine this looks like one of the top five percent of these delicas because they are old they're usually in worse condition than this and having the white on white or the white with the white bush bar i guess <laughs> i could have meant that when i said white on white uh the bush bar does come in chrome color or white so vindicated uh price 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 gasolines are much cheaper than diesels because small displacement diesels are in short supply around the world and so everybody wants to grab these because diesel 4x4 lifted suspension it's a pretty rad thing gasoline model though i still think it's going to be expensive but not as much as the diesel it would be over a million yen possibly if this were diesel possibly maybe somewhere between 700 to a million gasoline model i'm going to guess this one will be oh not importable to the usa that's going to affect the price too okay i'm going to say 350,000 yen on this one will be my guess okay next one from leslie lee i think that you are a rad dude leslie because i love this car and not very many people love this car and they should so this is the uh grandson of the ae86 this is what the car that it eventually became and wasn't made in america in fact i don't know which countries it was made probably some places in europe they they sold these but this one here is called the ae111 where do we got it here ae111 so it comes with a 4ag engine the very final version of it that has the titanium insides which is really cool revs to like 8,000 rpm and puts out according to toyota i think they said it was like 175 ps or 170 ps something like that and so i don't think it actually had that much power i think that they were just like wow honda's getting so much power out of their 16 at, at the moment and so we need to be doing something too i know let's just boost our numbers up an extra 20 ps i don't know if that's true this is what i've heard anyways uh 151 720 kilometers sprinter truno or tow ray no auction rate ra interior b power steering power windows airbag manual transmission car five speed i think you can get these with a six speed hmm. i wonder which version has the six speed i wonder if this uh, seller just put the wrong amount of speeds there huh oh well manual car dual airbags abs purchased from user what do we got here accident damage on the left front inner panel and the core support that has been repaired uh exterior has some paint way uh, paint fade you can see that in the pictures i think underside surface rust headliner is dirty aftermarket wheels and winter tires seat wear steering wheel wear all the regular places that have wear tires are inside the car 
which is weird. You can't really see them. All I can see is some really sweet grandpa seat covers in the back there. That looks awesome. Especially on a like non-four-door sedan. Cool. This car would be worth buying just to get those seat covers. They won't fit on any other car, so you have to drive this car. But it's a pretty good car, so I do recommend it. Okay, price-wise, generally these are pretty cheap. They're still used in racing, and so that keeps the price up a bit. But the condition's not amazing. It, it does have some big scratches here and here and here. Manual transmission, five speed. I'm looking down here, but all I can see is one, two, three, and four. I'll say 220,000 yen on this one. Okay, so we're going to the next one from Yoani Esparza. He says, this one can't be stock, can it? So what is it? The grand reveal here. Is that stock? Oh my gosh, that is an ugly brother. So, here's an interesting car. And probably one that a lot of people don't know, but the name of the car kind of is used now. So let's talk about it. This is a Mitsubishi RVR Hyper Sports Gear Z. The RVR is, was sold for, I think, two generations, and then it was stopped for like 10 years. And then they just started selling them again here in Japan. But the RVR name is the name of another Mitsubishi in other markets that isn't the same as the Japanese version of the RVR. But the RVR, the basics of this is half minivan, half SUV. So it has the raised up suspension and the four wheel drive. And then you can get these with Evo engines. So they're kind of like a cool little minivan, but not minivan with an Evo engine and a turbocharger. This one here, I don't think is the, maybe it is the turbo one. I don't know. I know better the, the previous generation to this. And even that's not saying much because I don't know these cars very well, even those ones. But it kind of looks like this one would be the one with the turbocharger. And I do believe that this front bumper and side skirts and rear spoiler, I think that those are all the parts of the Hyper Sports Gear Z, which sounds like something out of Gundam. And it sounds pretty awesome. And it would only be awesomer if it said that. I don't even know if awesomer is a word. It would only be more awesome if it said that right here. Hyper Sports Gear Z for ultimate driving fun and happiness. Or something like that. It could use some Oz wheels because every car needs some Oz wheels. But look at this. It's missing a door. You get two doors on this side and you get only one door on this side. Maybe that was the sales point of this car. Maybe that's how they made the car cheaper. I don't know. But it is weird. Cool seats that look like Recaro seats inside. Automatic transmission on this one. 59,507 kilometers. It's a 1997, so sorry people in the U.S., but your laws do not allow you to own cool cars. Assuming that this is a, considered a cool car by most people. I think it's dorky and stupid, but I think that a lot of dorky and stupid cars are cool. 2 liter engine. 3.5. Interior B. C2 on the roof. I would, wouldn't buy a car with C2 on the roof. It is too sad for me. Paint peeling over here and here and big scratches on the front bumper. And then wheel scratch, door mirror scratch, battery needs to be replaced and various scratches and dents. Nobody wants these. The condition with the rust on the roof is pretty bad, but the rest of the vehicle is good. The mileage is low, automatic transmission, and it has a cool name. So what do you think it's going to sell for? Uh, 80,000 yen, maybe. I guess we'll find out. All right, next brother. I think it's all brothers here today. Let's see, Elijah, Bill, Redneck Hunter. I don't know which gender Redneck Hunter is, but I'm guessing it's a boy. Leslie could be either way. Yoani, I think, is a boy. I think Leslie's a boy, too. Yeah, looks like we only have brothers on here. Okay, so the next one here sent in by Ray... Uh, Raymond Liang sent in this bad boy. Everybody loves the Defender. This is a 110. The Defender 110 has the rear doors here, and the Defender 90 doesn't have the rear doors. The 90 is the short wheelbase one with the V8 engine and all the awesomeness and worth a lot of money. The 110s are worth less, even though they're bigger, which is kind of weird because in most 4x4s it goes the other way around, where the four doors are worth more than the three doors, but the fenders are weird. And I think that 
at least in Japan and in the US, I think that you can only get the 4 liter V8 gasoline engine in the Defender 90, not in the 110. This one should have like a 2.5 diesel or something. Let's see. 2.5 diesel. You can get these with a 5 speed manual, but even with that, the 2.5 diesel is worth less than the 4 liter gasoline. Okay, so let's have a look here. Defenders are awesome vehicles. They are a competition for the Land Cruiser and being a Land Cruiser dude myself. I have this weird kind of thing where they're awesome, but at the same time, they are my enemy. And I don't know how to how that works in my brain. And so I try not to think about it too much. This one is right-hand drive, which lowers the value. It has a weird little center stack piece here I haven't seen. We've never exported a 110, but we've exported about 30 to 40 of the 90s. And so I know those ones well, but I don't know these ones as well. I heard that the engine is not very nice. This 2.5 liter diesel, but I don't really know. One owner, 16 inch wheels, half leather seats. Hmm, interesting. Interior dirty scratch, seat wear, front and rear side member dented and repaired. Headliner stain and comes down. Underside painted surface rust and corrosion. Winter tires on here. Stern wheel peeling. The body looks to be pretty much perfect with some repaint in several places. Wheel scratch, door wheel scratch, very scratches and dents. And so, how much does this car sell for? Uh, 2.8. Nope. 2.6 million yen would be my guess on this. And yes, the Defender 90s are worth more than that. Um, if they're in the same condition, they'll be in the 3 millions. Okay, on to the next one. And speaking of Land Cruisers, Jake, Jake Mello sent in this guy. It's a Land Cruiser 60. It's the kind of car that makes me happy all over. It looks like it has an orange interior, but it's actually brown. They only came with brown or blue interiors. Cool steering wheel. Cool black rims with black tires. As if tires of other colors were actually available. But they're ultra black. You know what I'm saying. Okay, so the Land Cruiser 60s are hard to find without a ton of rust on them or a ton of interior falling apart. The door cards tend to rip really quickly. I guess there's no picture of the door cards, but the part where it meets the window tears really quickly there. Power windows often break, which is like Toyota made a super tough, def dependable, awesome, and reliable car, but then they couldn't get the power windows right for some reason. Okay, 1986 Land Cruiser. This one is a, where's the chassis code? HJ61. 61 means turbo, and then 60 means non-turbo for the diesels. 4 liter, it's a 12H engine, aftermarket wheels and steering wheel. Condition wise, let's see, replace all the doors. Maybe the previous owner was like, doors, I don't need no stinking doors, kind of like Jeep style, but he didn't have a Jeep, so he just took off all the doors on his Land Cruiser. And then the person who bought it off of him was like, yeah, I got a, I got a Land Cruiser for a cheap price because it has no doors. Maybe. Repainted everywhere, but the original brown color. So that's pretty cool. A lot of Land Cruiser owners don't, like when they go to repaint their car, they always repaint it black because a black 60 series or 70 series or 80 series Land Cruiser in Japan is worth more. I don't know why, but I would much prefer to have the original color of the paint. And I love the brown interior with the brown exterior. I think this is really good. And I think it's going to sell for a lot because we got the five-speed manual, which is on like maybe 15% of them, maybe 20%. Aftermarket aluminum wheels. I already said, <laughs> I already read that. Uh, various wear here. Uh, cigarette burns. That's too bad. A lot of Land Cruiser drivers smoke cigarettes, so think about that before you buy one. Center pillar is dented. That's this guy here. It doesn't say which side, though, which is a bit weird. Core support replaced. Underside surface rust and corrosion, and the sunroof doesn't work. And here's what I found about the sunroofs uh, on this car. is A lot of times when it says the sunroof doesn't work, it actually does work but it just makes a weird sound. But the sunroofs on these always make a weird sound. When you open them up, when they get to the very end of the sunroof track, you hear a sound that sounds like <laughs> and then it does the same thing when you close it. And that's been on 100% of the Land Cruiser 60s that I've 
bought, and we've bought plenty of these. I think that's just the way that they are. And, and just like whoever, like Toyota was like, I know it makes a weird sound, but the Land Cruiser 60 is so awesome that people will buy these anyway. <laughs> or maybe it's just like a, something inside breaks on 100% of them. I don't know. If anyone out there has a Land Cruiser 60 and the sunroof doesn't make that sound, let me know. Okay, price-wise for this, it's going to be loads of money. The underside corrosion, usually corrosion is a no-no for me, but if you're in the market for a Land Cruiser, you're going to have to get used to it because it's on almost all of them. Uh, if it doesn't have any body corrosion, um, if it doesn't have any body corrosion, that usually means the underside corrosion won't be that bad. But since this one has had a full repaint, see the W on every one of the panels, there's a good chance that body rust has been repaired and because of that, I wouldn't buy this one because you never know if the body rust being repaired on the body was actually done appropriately or if it was a quick, you know, remove the rust, paint it, sell it, and line your pockets and go buy a boat. And it might be that one. So I wouldn't buy this one. I would recommend against it. But if you're buying it, you can if you want. It is up to you. And so that being said, I think we'll see this one sell for 1.6 million which is the very top level of these. But a super clean body, despite being repainted, it's going to keep that price up, and it looks good, mileage is low, and it's the five speed. It's a lot of things that everybody wants. Okay, on to the next one here. We're on to ooh, three left. This next one, I have to admit, is a car I never heard of until today. And then Andrew was like, dude, that car just had an article on Jalopnik about it. And sure enough, it was on Jalopnik, but I don't have time for that, for reading articles on the internets. And so I did not see it. Okay, so the article is funny. It says, this picture of a Subaru Forester is not a Subaru Forester. And it was uh, funny, and then people laugh. Uh, it is, I have to check on this paper, Honda Orthea. Apparently. Now, I looked it up on uh, Wikipedia. Apparently, it is a uh, Honda Civic with raised suspension, and they tried to sell it kind of as an SUV type offering. Probably to compete against the Forester. I think it's neat. I don't think that there's that much special about it. It's cool to have a four wheel drive Honda. I love Hondas, and I think that they're great cars, well built, last long. I think it's nerdy looking, but I like nerdy, and I love wagons, but I don't love this shape. I love fast wagons, not derpy ones. And this, but at least it has gold badges. And for that, we found something that we like about this car. Not much to say. Uh, sunroof dual pump system. It sounds <laughs> really rad. Not as rad as Roof rail spill <laughs> spiller. I think they meant spoiler. Um, but yeah, dual pump system. It says it up there. He's very proud of that. 1996 Honda Orthea. 3.5. Battery is dead. Headliner is stained. Uh, right folding mirror doesn't work. What is this? W cover scratched? What's a W cover? Wheel cover? Yes. Uh, winter tires, body scratched and dented, oil leak, and uh, antenna is broken. Big scratches and crack on the front. Lots of scratches, lots of scratches, lots of scratches. Not very many dents, but lots of scratches. It's like somebody went through a car wash, but instead of the car wash fingers, they put like needles on there and it just... <laughs> your car. I would not recommend this one. It doesn't look lovely. Even with low mileage and being a weird car. I read on Wikipedia that for the final year of production of this, they only sold 130 of them. And I, I, I can definitely see why. Okay, so what is this guy going to sell for? I think that we'll see this one at around uh, 40,000 yen. That even seems a little bit high to me. On to the next one from Jefferson Paraiso. Okay. I haven't been reading people's comments. Oh, I feel like such a bad boy now. Okay, so I'll start here. Jefferson says, although this might have some dents on the front, what do you think about the A32 Sephiro wagon or other same models in general? I rarely see them at auction and didn't know these exist. 
Well, that's true. I didn't know that these exist either because I don't really care too much about the Sephiro. The generation that comes before this, a lot of people like it because it's kind of a drift-like car. Uh, RB20 engine, rear-wheel drive, and um, available with a manual transmission. Once it became this generation, I don't think you can get any of those goodnesses. And so I think it just faded into obscurity and people never really think about it. I think a station wagon with a manual transmission is cool. And so, like, there are station wagon versions of, like, the Crown and the Mark II, but none of them come with manuals. I think if they did come with manual transmissions, you would see more of them in, in drifting and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, they wouldn't be as good as a sedan because of the extra weight of the of the back end, but I think it would be cool. And I've seen, like, uh, 260 RSs and stuff drift. It looks more fun to me. Oh, this one's been in an accident on the front. Uh, where is that front picture? It's crunchy. And so it's in the no claims section. So we don't know anything about it. That's a shame. 94,288 kilometers. Automatic transmission. 2 liter engine. Maybe a non-turbo SR20? Or 97 though. Did they make... I guess... I'm trying to think of any other cars that had a non-turbo SR20 in 97. But I don't really know that much. Sephiro Wagon. Could be a cool car if done correctly, but it's pretty normal. It's like a Camry, basically, like a Camry station wagon, if if those exist. I think they do for some years. Okay, uh, I don't think anyone wants this. Starts at 47. I'm going to say it's going to go unsold. I don't think people want to pay that much for this. Even for parts, that would be a stretch. So it'll go unsold, but I'll say 47,000 because maybe somebody will bid. And last one here, sent him from Raymond Yu. He's in clean and unmodified van. 21 windows, type 2 it is. So this is how you can drain your bank account. But the good thing about buying these is when you go to sell them 10 years later, you have made 10% per year on, uh, on value because the value keeps going up for these because people just keep having more and more and more money these days. The rich people seem to get exponentially richer every year. They're always looking for places to stick their money that isn't in another bank where the government can come and find their money. No, you can go buy a van, and then as long as it appreciates, you're not losing any money. Even if it depreciates, you're still hiding your money. Bad people. Okay, that being said, this van is just about as valuable as these vans go. People always say the 23 windows are the ones that everyone wants. This one's the 21 window, which is still valuable. I always knew the 23 windows are the super value ones, but I didn't know where the extra windows were. And so I had to look it up on Google Images. And so your extra windows on a 23 are right here, and they wrap around the corners, kind of like a 40 series Land Cruiser. Very cool. That being said, I think a 21 window would be just as good with just a little bit less value. Has air conditioning, manual style here. Love it. And these are easy vehicles to restore too. They're so simple, parts are available, and if you want a project and you want to become super rich if you do it properly, uh, then I would recommend them. Even the uh, like the next generation after this, I think like the T3, T2, T3, they're starting to climb in value too. It's weird how much people love these Volkswagen buses. And I love them too. They're, they're really cool buses. And I was complaining before doing this video to Andrew about how Volkswagen just can't manage to get the coolness of the original bus, bus in any of their remakes. And it's been like almost 20 years since they started showing us like hints of, we're going to redo the bus, and then nothing ever comes of it. And even the current generation, I think it's a cool looking vehicle, but you've got to get it right if you're going to redo the bus. Because this these buses are, when did they come out? Like early 50, 1950s? maybe late 1940s and people still think that they're really rad these days and I think that they're really rad too because they are rad and so you want your next version not to be like the current Beetle I mean there's nothing wrong with the current Beetle but it's just not as iconic as the original and nothing ever will be and so I think it might be better just to not mess around with that okay 21,626 miles on it body has repair paint wave and stuff you would want to make sure that your gaskets for the windows are good because that would be annoying to replace. Canvas on the top also. 
What do we got? Floor dented oil leak, various surface rust corrosion holes and cracks. Well, that sounds like a little bit of redoing there. Headliner interior liner parts have been redone and ripped. Okay. Steering wheel horn cover cracked. Hmm. And then value for these, you would have to be a professional bus valuer with more information on the vehicle to accurately know how much this is worth. I could see this one getting bid up to 5.5 million though. And with that being done, I mean, that's going to be my guess, 5.5 million on this one. And that is going to be the end of it. So next time, please, if you remember this, only send in three requests, not like 10 or 15, because we have cars to sell and cars to export. So thank you for understanding for that, and we'll see you guys again next week. Thanks a lot, and bye for now.